good day to everyone. Welcome to Mathematics Lessons Made Easy with Teacher PB. So, uh, for today, we're going to have our lesson all about... Today, we are going to have our lesson all about the measures of central tendency. And we're going to compute for the mean, median, and the mode of the ungrouped... <laughs> of the ungrouped data okay so ungrouped data it's because um we're going to base our computation of the mean median and mode from the base from the raw data that we have please stay tuned and keep on watching um if you haven't subscribed yet please do so i would love hearing from you please comment like and don't forget to share to everyone and click the notification bell icon Okay, so the objectives for today's lesson is, of course, we're going to calculate the measures of trend, central tendency, and that is not other than but computing for the mean, the median, and the mode based from the raw data that we have. Okay, so actually, um, ginagamit natin tung tung steps na to whenever we have a raw data that is just only very few. Pero kasi kapag masyado ng madami, tiba yung number of observations natin or yung number of raw data natin we're going to use the frequency distribution table we have to organize really our data so sa pag-compute natin ng mean, median, and mode kapag ka-grouped data doon tayo mag-base base sa FDT pero kapag ka, uh, konti lang naman yung raw data natin then ito yung pinakasimple yung paraan sa pag-compute ng mean, median, and mode Okay, so measures of central tendency, it is a measure indicating the middle of a set of data. It's not actually literally middle, ha? But when we say kasi central tendency, it's none other than but finding a single value that is used to identify as the center of the data. Kung baga, hinahanap lang natin talaga yung pinaka-center. Alright, it's like computing the computing your average. Are you going to pass or are you going to fail? It's just like that, okay? Right, so we have the following statistical averages. We have the mean, median, and the mode. Right, so let's proceed on to the first one and that is by getting the mean. Okay, so when we get the mean... The mean of ungrouped data is the sum of all the values divided by the number of observations. It's most commonly called as the average. Okay, so we use the formula x bar equals, alright, the summation of x of i, wherein i is equal to 1 to n divided by n okay you may think of this formula as really very difficult but however it's not okay so you just have to pay attention to me really clearly x bar is none other than the symbol of mean okay so mean though yung ano when we say mean we're going to get the average this symbol okay yung parang pabaligtad na m i mean nakatagilid na m it's none other than but the symbol of sum it's a summation notation Okay, then ito naman wherein i equals 1 is the item or values. Ilan yung values natin? Okay, usually ito hindi na to nagagalaw. It usually starts with 1. And then, the x sub i is the items for 1 to n. Ano yung mga values nung n? Okay, yun yung ipa-plus natin. And then, where n is the number of items or the number of observations. Okay. So, to understand better on how to compute for the mean, here are the scores of 10 grade 7 students in a 30-item mathematics quiz. So, yung isang estudyante nag-score siya ng 29, yung isa naman ay 30, yung isa ay 16, yung isa ay 19, yung isa ay 22, yung isa ay 23, yung isa ay 11, yung isa ay 23, yung isa ay 29, at yung isa namang, yung 10th student naman nag-score siya ng 23. So, how do we do compute for the mean? Mean is equal to what? Mean is equal to the summation of the values divided by the total number of observation or items. So, ito yung, ito yung, ano natin, di ba? Ito yung, ito yung given natin na example, okay? So, let us go back in here. First, we just have to copy the, uh, the mean symbol. So, equals, equals what? Ito, yan, summation na yan, 
Ang gagawin mo lang, ililista mo lang lahat ng mga values na to and then you just add them up. That's it. Okay? So, you just have to add them up. 29 plus 30 plus 16 plus 19 plus 22 plus 23 plus 11 plus 23 plus 29 plus 23. Ito lang yun ha, raw data itself. And then, i-divide natin siya sa kung ilan sila lahat. Okay? So, let's count. Okay, binilang nyo ba? That's a total of 10 observations or 10 items or 10 raw data. That's why ang nasa ilalim natin is 10. Okay? So, yung nasa taas, ipagpa-plus lang natin lahat. Ang nasa ilalim ay 10. You know this symbol, right? It's a fraction. The invisible operation is to divide. So, computing, of course, you have to use your calculator. This is equal to what? 29 plus 30, so on and so forth, plus 23. That is a total of 225. I-divide natin by 10. And 225 divided by, divided by 10 is equal to 22.5. And that's already your final answer. Okay, so yun. Ganun lang. <laughs> okay, let's proceed with the following. Janeline's savings on 5 school days are as follows. 32, 35, 25, 25, and 18. Okay, compute for the mean. You can do that. Alright, so time is up. Did you compute for the mean? What's the answer? The answer is 27. Okay, next. Let's proceed on with the following. We have the median. Okay, so median is none other than but the middle score in the list after the score is arranged in array. So what does it mean by array? Array means you have to arrange your raw data into ascending or descending order. So kinakailangan daw pala dapat bago ka kumuha ng median, dapat yung data mo ay naka-arrange in array form. Magkakasunod from lowest to highest or from highest to lowest. It depends upon to you. Wala namang kaso yon kahit pababa or kahit pataas. Kasi pag kinuha natin yung median na yon kahit naka-ascending or descending siya, yun at yun pa rin naman yun. Okay, so let's have the following. Usually, when we get the median, it's none other than but the middle. But we have two things to consider when we get the median. Kapag ka-odd yung number of observations mo, the median is none other than but the middle itself. Literally, yung pinakagitna lang. Kapag odd number yung observation, ano ba yung mga odd numbers natin? 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. Yun talaga. Tingnan mo na lang yung daliri mo, yung kaliwang, yung kaliwang kamay mo. Di ba may lima kang daliri dyan? Yung pinakagitna mo is the middle finger, then that's already the median. But, if in case you have an even number of observations, ano bang mga even numbers natin? We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, so on and so forth. Tignan mo na lang yung kamay mo, yung dalawang kamay mo, okay? Pag nag-appear ka, <laughs> appear, disappear. Yung dalawang, uh, mapapansin mo na dalawa yung nasa gitna mo, okay? And... To compute for the median, we're going to simply just add the two middle values and then divide it by 2. That's already the median. Kung ano compute mo doon, magkatap pagkatapos mong mag-add at saka mag-divide by 2, lagi po bang divide by 2? Yes, that's already the formula. Divide by 2, that's already your median. Okay, so let's have the following. The scores of 10 grade 7 students in a 30-item mathematics quiz. Okay, so yan yung mga scores nila. You will clearly see na yung data natin is really a raw data. Hindi pa siya naka-array form. Alright, please observe the following. Okay, nilista ko lang ulit siya sa taas. And then what you're going to do is, what we are going to do is that we have to arrange it in an array form. So either in increasing or in decreasing order. Usually, um, increasing tayo lagi. Inuuna natin kung sino yung pinakamababa sino, hanggang sa pataas. Okay. 
Alright, so the lowest is 11, the highest is 30. Ito na yung array natin. Dito na tayo ngayon mag-base ng ating median. Okay? So, but first, we have to count. Uh, count, sorry, count. Ilan ang, ilan ang raw data mo? Let's count. That's 1, 2, 3, That's 10 in all. Dahil 10 yan, therefore, go back to the situation or to the case that we have. Is it an odd or is it an even? 10. 10 is an even, right? So, therefore, we have to consider this formula in finding the median. Okay? And then, dalawa yung gitna natin. Yun, yun na yung nasa gitna natin. Take note ha, again, I'm going to repeat. Hindi tayo dito magbe-base. Saan tayo magbe-base? Sa array, sa array natin. Okay? So, yung dalawang nasa gitna, that's, uh, that will be, you, you just have to. Yung nauna will be your x sub 1. Yung pangalawang nasa gitna ha, yung nasa gitna will be your x sub 2. So, you just have to add them up and then i-divide natin by 2. That is already your median. So, median is equal to what? 23 plus 23 and then divide by 2. Okay? So, 23 plus 23 is equal to what? That's 46 divided by 2. 46 divided by 2, 2, that's equal to 23. And that's already your final answer. Okay? Now, let's have the following. Janeline's savings on 5 school days are as follows. 32, 35, 25, 25, and 18. So, ito lang yung kanina, ha? Okay, so... First, let's list down our our data and then arrange it into its array form 18 25 followed by 25 okay there you are and then let's count Two, three, four, five. so five five yun diba five yung five yung raw data natin and five is an odd number therefore we have to consider this just simply get the middle and that's already your median okay yeah right that's our final answer already next how about this one can you compute for the median the monthly electric consumption in kilowatts per, per hour of a certain household Time's up. What's the median? The median is 260.5. Okay. So, um, just a reminder, class. If when when things or when it happens that your number is a decimal number and it's a it's a non-terminating number, you just consider the uh two you just consider two digits right after the decimal point. Okay. The next, let's have the following. The third one is the mode. So, how do we compute for the mode? Do we really need to compute for the mode? Mode is the data item that occurs most often, most frequent, most popular. So, you most often, most frequent, most popular, they're just all the same. You just have to think kung ano yung, no, you just have to take a look at your data kung ano yung uh, mas pinakamaraming nag-appear. Kumbaga, ilan yung mas pinakamadami. Yun yung mode natin. Okay? Hindi yung ilan ha, ano yung pinakamadami. Ano? Okay? Yun yung tanong. Ano yung pinakamadami? That, that's the mode. Right? So, let's take a look at the following. Um, we have classification of mode. The first one is none other than but the unimodal, bimodal, and multimodal. Unimodal, from the word itself, uni, isa lang yung pinaka-madami. 
by modal, dalawa silang pan pantay. Okay? So, para sure kayo na hindi kayo magkamali, siguro mas better kung i-arrange mo yung data mo in array form or magtara ka. Kasi kung sino yung may pinakamaraming tali, then that's your mode. Then, we have the multimodal. Ibig sabihin, uh, tatlo na or more than two. Ibig sabihin, tatlo, pat, tatlo at pataas yung uh, mode mo. Right? So, let's have the following. The scores of 10 grade 7 students in, in a 30-item mathematics quiz. Ito yung data natin. Yan. Okay. So, take a look at ano yung pinakamadami. <laughs> 29, isa lang. Right? Ano yung pinakamadami? Okay. So, let's take a look at this and show our solution for that. Of course, ito yung data natin. Ano yung mode natin? Yung most often daw lang, ha? Yung most frequent, yung most popular. So, you can clearly see na si 29, isa lang siya. Si 30, isa lang. 16, isa. 19, isa. Ah, 29, dalawa. Sorry, 29, dalawa. 22, isa. 23, isa. Dalawa, tatlo. Tatlo yung 23 mo. Right? So, therefore, the mode is none other than but the 23. Okay? Yun. Yun na yung mode natin. And it's a unimodal. Unimodal siya kasi nag-iisa lang siya. Pero kung halimbawa nagkataon na tatlo din yung 29, therefore, maglagay ka na lang ng comma 23, comma 29. Kasi dalawa yung mode mo. And that's already a bimodal if that is the case. Kung dalawa. And since this one is just only 23, 23 lang naman yung mode mo, kasi, kasi siya yung pinakamarami, that's a unimodal. Okay, so what's the mode in the following? The monthly electric consumption in kilowatt per hour of a certain house. A certain household is shown below. Okay, so yan. Yan yung data natin. What's the mode? The mode is none other than but the 257 and 265. Dalawa. Kasi dalawa yung 257 mo. Dalawa din yung 265 mo. So, ano ang mode mo? 257, 265. Okay? And that's a bimodal. Alright, so I do hope you learned a lot in this lesson. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye everyone and God bless.